The FBI is currently looking for uh, to, to build a new headquarters and a campus in DC. And uh, the FBI is gigantic, it has a lot, thousands of employees that are gonna be there. So this is a big development, it's expected that it's gonna be one of the biggest building uh, related government contracts in US history. Estimated to start off with a price tag of $2 billion. And we know how these things work out after a few years or after a decade, not to mention of course running the thing. And the contractor who's going to build the new one gets to control the previous one, which is an amazingly valuable piece of real estate. So who gets this contract is incredibly important, very lucrative. So let's check in on who might get this. Here's a surprise for you. Vornado Realty Trust, a New York real estate firm whose founder and chairman, Stephen Roth, is a longtime friend of and occasional advisor to Donald Trump is one of three finalists for the rights to develop the FBI's new headquarters and campus. Now, you might have seen him in the news recently. Roth is helping head up Trump's Infrastructure Advisory Council, from which we have so many details, and traveled with the president as he rolled out his plans last week. Trump introduced him to the crowd as one of the greatest builders in America. I don't know if that's true, but he might soon be one of the richest builders in America <laughs> if Donald Trump whose administration will be making this choice decides to go with him. Is, is there any president who is more deserving of, of, of overseeing the groundbreaking of a new FBI headquarters <laughs> than Donald Trump? I can't, so think right. of, I can't think of who that would be. Uh, is Stephen Roth already one of the build, biggest, um, yeah. I mean richest builders in America mm -hmm. uh, as, we, as we speak. Uh, Crew, the uh, Center for Research, uh, for uh, what is it, uh, ethics and politics, responsible the ethics. ethics. In, yeah. in Washington, the ethics watchdog has said that there's no chance that this would pass any kind of muster, that mm -hmm. having Roth win this bid. And I think, I mean, well, of course he'll win it, right? But uh, <laughs> you would think that um, that what crew is having to say about it, that the, the president would not want to run up against Congress again on something as, as bald faced as this. And that's what, what it is. I just don't Assuming know. Assuming that there would be a run up. Thank you. I just well, don't right. know that he would get gets pushback. I mean, that's well, well, I think that, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, there's nothing. You can't know that he would get pushback. But the more these these things do have a cumulative effect, they had them on Nixon in a, in a malignant way, they had them on Carter in a benign way. So the way that these things, if you keep presenting Congress with things that they are just against and you get people in your own party starting to become against them, yeah. then you run into it. It's probably not gonna happen with Joe Roth and Vornado, or Steve Roth and Vornado. But if they're the kind of things that add on to the, the sort of the, what is the game where you put Jenga pile? Yeah. Uh, and and I, think, um, I think that's problematic. But this is problematic on another level because you're gonna yeah. be in court again on something like this. And it, they don't care. Obviously, they don't care. They're there to get their cronies wealthy, yeah. and and that's uh, going to. They're wealthy cronies, wealthy. By the yeah, way, right. people wealthy. are already well wealthy. Yeah, yeah wealthy. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I mean, look, we were just talking about the possible eight hundred billion dollars that's going to be just given out to all these different contractors. I mean, that's obviously a much larger sum of money, but there's something personal about this. About that, he can simply say, "Oh, my buddy gets this." That I think for a lot of Americans is going to be more clearly corrupt. Like everybody gets when your friend gets two billion dollars. I mean, not that we have the personal experience, but we know that just, that sounds like Russia. It sounds like Turkey. It sounds like some third world country that we don't want to be. And I hope that a lot of Americans have a problem with this. But John, but just I want to, to, to play off of what you just said. I know you, there's another thing you want to say, but what you said is so true. I mean, that's exactly what's going on here. And that's exactly what's at the center of this Russia investigation, right? It's people thinking, perhaps rightfully, we don't know yet, Bob Mueller hopefully is going to figure this out, that the reason that all of this is happening was to get his cronies richer. That that he yeah. was going to lift these sanctions in exchange for lifting these sanctions. Wealthy Russians were going to come in, invest. They're going to they were going to relax the debt that they had. All of that was going to happen. So this is similar to that. I mean, this yeah. is exactly what's going on here. Let's get Steve Roth rich, just like we're going to get X, A, Y, and Z Russian rich. Yeah, it's, it's truly Putin esque. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely That's what. what John uh, said. What John said. I mean, it is. It's a. It's a. It's Russia 2.0. Yeah. 
Now, just in case like you think, okay, so this guy was on the stage with him, he called him a great builder. Okay, he's his friend. But I wanna make really clear the business ties between these two as we close out the story. Vornado and the Trump Organization are jointly invested in two buildings already, one in Manhattan, one in San Francisco. Vornado is also in the midst of negotiations with Jared Kushner's corporation about the future of their 666 Fifth Avenue skyscraper. I just, I love the. If you're a conspiracy theorist yeah. online, the fact what? that it's 666, six, six, six. that's just gotta just make you so tingly. <laughs> yeah. Is it, um, when you were a little kid growing up in New York, there was a little cafe on the top called Top of the Sixes, which was like was the, really? the B version of Windows on the World at the World oh, okay. Trade Center. Or the Observatory. Oh. So it was, a, it was a cheap way to yeah. get to the top of a building and have a <laughs> piece yeah. of cake with your grandmother. Now, we've talked about that building before, about how Jared Kushner invested a massive amount of money in this building as one of the first things that he did as like the head of this uh, organization. At immediately prior to the Great Recession, by the way, which was a great call. Um, but look at look at how clear the connection here is. The company Vernado came to the rescue of the Kushners when it agreed to an arrangement that gave Vernado forty nine point five percent of the office portion of six 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 and seventy percent of the retail space. So potentially saving billions of dollars uh, for the Kushners there. And Kushner, of course, one of the chief advisors to Donald Trump. So whether it's Donald Trump's decision that this guy gets it, or if it's to help pay off the aid that they've given to the Kushners, I mean, that is sick in either case, and it's happening right now as we're filming this. You don't like ads? I hear you, brother. You know how you can avoid ads for the Young Turks? Become a Young Turks member and get all the content ad-free. TYTnetwork.com slash join.